What's up guys, I'm Chris and uh, today I'm going to be putting together our four cubic foot subwoofer cabinet uh, pre-cut for the 18 inch Ultimax subwoofer. It's our part number 300-7079. This is a excellent kit, it's all pre-cut, CNC milled uh, panels, painted out of three quarter inch MDF, double front baffle, and let's get started. I'm going to start off just dry fitting all the parts to make sure everything's in the kit and cut properly. Kind of helps you get a good idea of how to assemble everything too. Start off setting the braces down in the dados. Don't have to worry about everything being square quite at this point. This is one of the reasons why we dry fit. Now this particular piece is about an eighth of an inch longer in one direction than the other and you don't want to find that out in the middle of your gluing. So you know, make sure that all the parts are in the proper position. And that way when you actually do get around to gluing, you know everything's right. Front baffle will set up on top in the end. And as you can see, everything is real tight cut. You know, it ends up with a nice, easy to finish cabinet. And it's pretty much dry fit now. We know everything's good all ready to go, so get ready to glue it up. Now I'll warn you, watch it on these, because when you pull these pieces out, if you rock them any left or right, you're gonna split the MDF down at the bottom, so be sure you pull everything straight out of the, straight out of the dados, it's all real tight cuts. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and start the glue up. Um, I usually lay down a pretty heavy bead of glue, especially on parts like this where you can't see it, it's on the inside. I like to spread the glue out a little bit with the brush. Kind of keeps your squeeze out under control. And brush away from these outside dados. You don't want to get any glue in that area at this point. And just set the piece in place. Give it a firm push. You'll see the little bit of glue squeeze out on the edges. That's a good thing. Clean up that data a little bit. Now you've got your two horizontal or vertical braces in place. I haven't checked for square or anything at this point, but it's not necessary. I'm gonna wait till I do this last brace in place for that. For the last brace, again, apply glue to every surface that's gonna be touching, which includes up in here against these two braces and down in these dados. Here's another advantage of a brush is it makes it nice and easy to get into odd vertical surfaces like here. Set your cross brace in place. A nice thing about these cabinets is this center brace is going to be kept square by these two braces. So I'll start off putting clamps just on the center brace to hold it in place. And then once you get that in place, just come back and make sure these two braces are square. Which again, mount's good for that. Keeping everything square makes finishing a heck of a lot easier in the long run. Now that we've got everything, well now that we've got the braces all glued in place and squared up. We're gonna let those dry for a couple hours. Now that the glue's all dry on the braces, lay a bead of glue on each long edge. And last time we were being careful not to get glue in here because it would interfere with putting this piece in here. Everything's such a tight fit that any excess glue in that rabbited edge would uh, create an issue. And just set the panel in place. Set the other panel in place. I like to uh, set the bottom edge down first and then rock it up. That forces most of the squeeze out to the inside of the cabinet. Then I would uh, 
place a clamp near the bottom on each piece. That'll set it into the uh, set it into position tightly. <laughs> now that these sides are all dried up, glue's all set. We're gonna go ahead and glue on the last two sides. Again, heavy bead of glue. Too much is always fine. Especially when constructing large cabinets like this, the more clamps the better, pretty much to no end. Now start off just setting the baffle in. Pretty easy to get it all lined up. Oh, okay. All right, and again in this step, the more glue the better. Now inevitably, as you clamp it down, the top panel is going to float around a little bit, so it takes a lot of, a little bit of patience to adjust all your clamps. I went ahead and scraped off any of the, uh, many of the drips that we had coming down, which they'll just scrape right off with a razor or uh, even a paint scraper will get that off. I just like to use random orbital sander and some 80 grit sandpaper. I found when sanding that when you get to these edges, as you sand it down, you're going to end up flattening off part of the roundover. And I found it best to actually roll up and over the edge. Don't go along the edge because that'll just create a flat spot that's real difficult to get out. All right, now I have the cutout for the amplifier all laid out. Amplifier's going to go here, module's going to go here. I'm just putting it on the back so it's out of sight, out of mind. I'm going to start off drilling off each, out each corner so then when I cut it, all I have to do is just cut straight lines with the jigsaw. It makes everything a lot easier in the long run. I like to set the amp in and mark all the screw holes for the amplifier and the control panel. I'm going to go ahead and drill out all the screw holes right now, just so it's one less thing to worry about later. Now uh, we decided that these 90 degree angles on this box are a little rough, so or a little sharp. So I'm going to go ahead and soften up the enclosure by routing a 45 degree angle on all the edges. Um, I'm going to do it in a few passes to go slow so it doesn't burn up the wood or burn up the uh, bit. I went ahead and sealed all the edges of the MDF with a mixture of water and wood glue, uh, two parts water to one part wood glue. Just paint it on the, all the seams and kind of wipe it off to keep it from dripping down the faces. That seals the seams so none of the ingrain or lack of ingrain transfers through the paint, which in this case we're using black Duratex, which is covers pretty well, but MDF does telegraph almost through anything. So. Now we're gonna go ahead and start finishing it. Don't have to be neat at this point, just pretty fast. In a way, I'm doing one side at a time, but all sides at once also. I'm using the uh, Duratex textured roller. Duratex is a real durable, thick cabinet covering, uh, paints on or sprays on. Uh, the main advantage of Duratex, it is extremely durable. Um, it's a real thick product, so it's good for covering mistakes, any imperfections in the cabinet. It's just a quick and easy way to get a real nice professional looking finish. One of the most surprising things about Duratex is how water soluble it is. This stuff cleans up real easy. Um, so generally you can use one brush, clean it up, and continue to use it afterwards. But it actually comes out easier than even latex paint. No reason to buy multiple rollers, just one will do a long time for you. All right, before I uh, Duratex the bottom of it, I went ahead and laid out where I want to put the uh, Mount the Dayton Audio speaker spikes. And I drilled smaller holes and then painted the Duratex on. Essentially small holes mark the location. Now I'm gonna go ahead and drill them out to the full size and put in their little threaded inserts for the uh, spike sets. I, the reason I did it this way is if you put these in beforehand, if you got any Duratex in here into the threads, it would be almost impossible to clean out and get your spikes mounted. So we're gonna 
drill a 5 16 inch hole where I've got each one marked. Seems good for when your floor's on level two. Yep, now it's time to wrap up this build. Um, the finish is all done. I've got the spikes all installed. Everything's ready to go. All my holes are pre-drilled for the amp and the driver. So I'm gonna start off mounting the amplifier. Well, more specifically, the control board for the amp, which this one's pretty easy. Just has a, a three foot ribbon cable. Just plug it in the back and drop the control panel right in place. For mounting this amplifier, well, essentially, for mounting everything in this enclosure, we're gonna use uh, our new cap head wood screws, Allen head, or, yeah, Allen head wood screws, which are nice, give a good professional look, and I'm a big fan because they pretty much lock into your drill. Now to mount the amp itself, just uh, plug the ribbon cable in the connector right there. Just drop her right in. This is Acousta stuff. Um, the kit comes with four pounds of Acousta stuff. The Acousta stuff makes the cabinet look larger or seem larger to the enclosure or to the driver. Now as it comes, Acousta stuff is pretty tightly packed in the bags. Um, you wanna just fluff it up to try to get a nice, even, fluffy consistency. Um, essentially, the lighter, the better is what you're looking for. Generally, one pound per cubic foot is the recommended amount. It's something that needs to be, you know, there's really no set in stone amount to put in it, so it's something that you kind of need to play with to get the perfect amount. As I put the acoustic stuff in the enclosure, I'm trying to avoid the actual amplifier itself because that is fan cooled. You want to keep as much airflow to the fan as possible. Um, I've also used the acoustic stuff to essentially anchor any loose wires. The ribbon cable I have tucked up in this corner with the acoustic stuff, um, that'll do everything you can to avoid the wires from actually rattling against the enclosure walls. Uh, this is to ensure an airtight seal to the cabinet. You don't want any air leaking between the driver and the enclosure. Um, the Ultimax is a dual coil, two ohm per coil driver, and the amplifier is designed for a single four ohm load. So to start off with, I've run a jumper wire from the positive of one coil to the negative of the other. That'll, that runs the two coils in series, which will create a four ohm load, which is pretty much optimum for the amplifier. Go ahead and uh, hook the red from the amplifier to the red on one coil, and hook the black to the black of the other coil. At that point, you just go ahead and drop the driver in place. Once again, I'm using our number five cap head screws. Pretty much a perfect fit for this Ultimax. And that's it. The subwoofer is now ready for some serious low frequency reproduction. Thanks for watching this video and if it helped or you think it could help someone else, give it a like. And if you want to see more videos just like this, just click subscribe to be updated with all our latest videos and content. Also make sure to visit Parts Express for all your speaker building needs. Now here's a clip of this subwoofer in action. <laughs>